We're up near Skookum Lake. As you can tell, the road kind of ran out on us and we're left to hike around. And uh, there's so many Bigfoot sightings up and around this area, just about anywhere to hike is as good as the next. And uh, we got very close according to our Google Maps and GPS to the actual Skookum Lake. So we're gonna look around and see if we can spot a Bigfoot or find evidence of Bigfoot up in the area. We got Kelly, Brody, and Jenny on this Oregon Bigfoot expedition. And look, the road's just a mess. It's been a mess the whole way up and finally got to an impassable part. that I suggested doing was walking to each one of the snow banks up ahead and see if we can find places where Bigfoot may have crossed through the snow because the footprint didn't show up so well. We tried that one time in garbage and found some Bigfoot tracks and followed them up into the forest where they'd crossed on some of these patches of snow. And of course, look off trail, folks. If we can find something interesting to take us off trail, we will. We're at 3,000 feet elevation at 68 degrees. We were figured we were near the uh, the top of the pass. I just couldn't turn around. I wanted to hike to the top of the pass at least. Yeah, the water goes all the way in there. God, the forest is so dark. Something could easily be standing there staring at you and because of the darkness you wouldn't register if it's even remotely camouflaged. I just heard a vocalization off to our left. I heard it at. Are you sure? I can only hear the water rushing. It sounded like a coyote. Sounded like a coyote up there. You heard the same type of vocalization. Yeah, it, was a, it was a little yip. Now just because it sounds like a coyote doesn't mean necessarily mean that's what it is. Check out the waterfall across the way. Did you guys hear the wood crack? Look, we found uh, choke cherry trees and our experience in Sasquatch Canyon is uh, 
we had a day where we heard a lot of wood knocking and stuff and being paralleled and on the way out this big thick busted on both ends cherry wood tree was right in the middle of the trail that you could not miss it and it wasn't there on the way in and you could see places where the bark was worn off where it was knocking it so you know we don't we don't know who left it there but perhaps bigfoot that was knocking with it all day left it out in front of us knowing that we were going to come across it again it was really weird so whenever i see choke cherry trees i'm like that's the really heavy hardwood that bigfoot likes to make his wood knockers with yeah all the downed trees and a bunch of patches of snow that we couldn't drive past on our way to the skookum lake area we decided to just hike the road in and see what we could find and the road's been pretty nice after a half a mile of obstructions so uh we're 99.9% .9 sure there's not another human being any further than we had to leave the vehicle. Definitely don't Found more snow on the way to Skookum Lake. We uh, all talk about the Pacific Northwest and the terrain. Um, it's very unforgiving for leaving behind footprints with something that has a flat foot and, you know, padded. I mean, hoofs dig into just about anything so we like to check the mud around snow embankments and check the snow to see if there's any tracks good spot right here for it yeah we got stopped about a mile down that way our vehicle should be down there somewhere jen was just saying look at this hair Huh. That's not hair. Is that it's moss? Black, black moss. Black moss. We have found Bigfoot tracks in this type of snow block in the remote dirt roads before. We've been lucky once. We're up near the top of the mountain. We have climbed from 1,700 feet up above 4,000 feet now. Ooh, the snow's deep right here. See how well our tracks are showing up in the snow. Hopefully we get lucky and see where a squat's walked through one of these. Oh, a snap off that wasn't snow load you guys look it's right up at the top near a, a road or a trail there's a lot of bigfoot researchers that think it's like a message you know saying you know stay on your trail stay on your road but don't come here off trail Some giant trees around here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Wow, so much snow. Not a bad incline to walk up though, really. It's pretty gradual.
think we're getting closer to where the grab is, right? Because of the noise. Yeah. There's probably hundreds of those, though. Yeah, we can hear it. We're not that much higher. We stop here for just a sec. Yeah. Doing good? Yeah. Sorry, it's not a little bit. Deep. It's deep and it's soft. Do I have my little socks on? <laughs> my feet are wet now. Are they? Oh yeah, I don't got tall boots. Do you have a? Uh... I get ankle shoes on. Do you got wool socks? Yeah. Okay, I just don't want you to get hypothermia. <laughs> I don't think it's possible for me to get hypothermia. Well, maybe if you put me in icy water, it floated me there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-three minutes, twenty seconds per mile. Son of a bitch. Huh? We're only we're doing a twenty-three minute mile right now. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good because we're walking through snow and over uh, deadfall. It should be funny for me. We're going uphill though. And then snow. We stopped to take scenic view pictures. That would be really cool to catch a Bigfoot come out in the opening when we're shooting live instead of having to try and get the camera turned on when it appears. <laughs> yeah, I'm more than 99.9% .9 sure that we're the only ones back here. None of those uh, mud banks and snow drifts was a single human footprint in any of them. We're the only people back here. So anything we see in here is not another person. We normally wouldn't hike on a dirt road looking for Bigfoot, but uh, this is the Skookum Lake area near uh, Mount Hood. And uh, yeah, we're seeing if we can actually make it to the trailhead to the lake. The goal was the lake today, but now that uh, we got stopped two miles back there, now the goal is to see if we can actually make it to the trailhead. Look at that scenery, people. We're nearly to the top of this mountain we're on. I'm sorry. He called it devil monkey. There's a devil monkey in the forest, Mom. <clears throat> Are you talking about Monster in the Woods, the devil monkey episode? Yeah. Whatever it was, haunted woods or... These woods are haunted, I think it is called. You know, that was a good episode, the, the devil monkey one. For a, can you get halfway there? We're halfway there? That's what I was saying. I've been wanting to see this area so bad, I didn't care if the car couldn't make it. Like, let's go. <laughs> Grabbed our pack, some water, a couple of snacks. We were planning on hiking five or six miles today when we got to Skookum Lake Trailhead anyway. Now we're watching the mud and the snow to find any justifiable reason to go off trail after Bigfoot. I just don't think Bigfoot can live its life without crossing the road at some point. So we look for uh, it crossing trails and roads all the time and sometimes leads us back to some 
remote places they may live or visit often. I keep hearing some thumping. We were hearing the same thing on Mount St. Helens last year. Yeah. I got a protein bar. <laughs> I have um, a bag of tuna, um, a can of sardines, oh, excuse me, smoked oysters. Um, I also have uh, a beef jerky, Chuck that. and I have uh, two of those little tiny economo packs of uh, uh, fruit snacks. Wow, we got like a week's worth of food. Yep, if we just eat one fruit snack a day, mm. I can we can last a week. Yep. <laughs> I got a knife. <laughs> got a big knife. Yeah. Check out all this snow, people. We were crazy to think we were gonna be able to drive in today, but this is our first time in the Skookum Lake area. Wish I would've brought my higher boots. Look at those. These look like old Bigfoot tracks. Look at the size of those holes in the snow. They're way too old to say for sure what they are. I don't know if these are showing up on the camera. All right, we found some tracks. Hopefully they get discernible. They fork like two of them were stepping in each other's tracks and then forked off here. Look at that. Look at the toe section up in the front. Oh, wow. We might have found what we were up here looking for, you guys. And seeing there's another one over here. Yeah, it looks like something with very large feet was crossing the snow here. Here, there, it goes all over right here. Hopefully it's Skookum. There's a lot of traffic right here. Yeah. Looks like a major crossing area. The water's right there. <laughs> There's a pool right here too. This pool of water probably only been exposed for a few months though. Or a few weeks is what I meant. We're on just nothing but straight snow now. Yeah. Here, I'll try and break a path for you, Jen. Jen's got low top shoes on today, or hiking boots. Here's some more of the old, big old track. There's dry road coming up. Yeah. 
no matter what time of year it is, we always end up in the snow, it seems like. Even if it's July or August, we somehow always hit the snow line looking for Bigfoot. Oh, Mr. Ridge Walker. We've probably found about 20 impassable points by vehicle. And I'm talking a lot of them. You need a, a good chainsaw to get past them too, no matter what you're in. Right across the road. Eskukum Lake does not look very accessible for very long every year. Very remote and cut off most of the year, obviously. Um, so that might be some hiker. How do you get there? I think we almost tried to go there. I'd have to look at it closer, but I think we almost tried to get there yesterday and we couldn't get there. It's a lot of cold. Mm -hmm. No, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. There's a whistle down there. You hear it? Uh-oh. What? <laughs> we went the wrong way. See? Remember when we were at that impasse? Yeah. We went the wrong way. Look, because the stop's up here. We need to go. wonder if it'll give us a vantage point to look down onto Skookum Lake. We needed to keep going down. We went the wrong way. That was a 50-50 chance. We've hiked over three miles and I have not seen any deer tracks, elk tracks, rabbit. Only thing we've seen is some big flat looking uh, tracks in the snow and we've seen two sets. But uh, they were old enough that we couldn't like, you know, say for sure what they were. I can tell you what they are not. They're not elk or deer. Jenny's got her raincoat over her backpack, keep everything dry. Got her one that was a little extra big so she can do that. Jenny just pointed in a direction. She keeps hearing whistles up that way. And then I just heard a whoop up that way. The snow is so deep up here. Okay. We got to check out the imprints. Brody and Jenny just found a footprint. I stayed back a ways to film some stuff back there. And then I caught up to them and they found what looked like a fresh footprint. And then uh, they said it just filled in with water and disappeared that fresh that, you know, it made an impression. They saw the impression it and then like it just filled so up. 
You could actually see where the toes were. You could see where the toes were. And then as we were watching it, just a tiny little piece of dirt just kind of fell into Flicked where the Flicked into where the toe, toe was. was. And then it just filled up with water and you couldn't see the imprint of the foot any longer. Nope. And since they found that, we have heard whistles and whoops right here at this spot. What? A stick just stuck in the ground? Uh -uh. I don't know. I don't know. I know. It's getting a lot cooler right I now. I think that's... It's really cold on this side of the mountain. And see, I think the road curls around and it's right there to our right, Jody. I think this part of the mountain's in the shade most of the time. Mm -hmm. What is that? What do you see? Like a big hut. Kind of like a shelter down there, isn't it? It's a dry spot, too. Might be a bear den. That wasn't a bear track you guys saw, was it? No. It looked Bigfoot-like is what the gist I got from you guys. It didn't look like a double step because it was too smooth and, and the outline of the edge of the foot was so consistent. It didn't look like a double print. And the back hill was wide, not skinny. Yeah, it was uh, wide. Like five inches or better. Yeah, that's a, That's almost six inches wide that you were showing me. Okay. I feel like there's probably six feet or more of snow underneath me. Right I now. Think so. It looks about six footish to me. Be like I could just disappear. Right now. Yeah, you could you could probably make a snow hut. Yeah. No problem. We're about as far in as we can get. The snow has just gotten so deep on us that uh, we're gonna make our way back. And we've uh, heard some whoops on this uh, hike. We've heard some grunts and we've heard some whistles. And uh, we rarely we rarely make any type of vocalizations or try and communicate unless we've already heard some of that stuff in the area so i'm gonna do a little bit of my wood knocking and grunting every now and then on the way back to see if we can uh, get a response to stuff that we've already heard so yeah here's my type of wood knock and this is something else that we've heard on the way up Yeah, we're going to be going back to the location where we heard that stuff. It's pretty close to where the footprint was. It was right here. Uh -huh. And you could see tolls run right after another right here. And actually this little thing, this uh -huh. little guy, was up like this. And then it just went tink while we were looking at it. And see, you can kind of see the heel right here. Let's measure that. You're seeing enough of it that we can put a tape on that. It's so... I wish... I wish... Was this on? It's on right now. Was it on while I was explaining all that? Um, it's just so frustrating because we didn't have... We didn't have the camera and it was... You could see it so good before it filled in with, with the melting snow. Okay, so... This is where you can see the back of the hill mark. That's right here. I mean, it's so irritating that you can't see much the, of it the anymore. The water come in and, uh, so it was probably pretty fresh. Maybe it's up ahead of us here. Well, I know, and that's why I'm saying you can kind of see where the toes were. Yeah, measure it. You know where they're at. Okay, so the heel mark, the remnants of the heel mark is about... I see about five, five. inches. Five. Yeah. It's about five inches across. Okay, now the toes... I can see the toes from here. ...are about eight inches across. Okay, and, and you could see the toes really good right here and even as me and Brody passed by this little chunk of stone just flicked over like that so it was so fresh that the the, the earth was still like moving so the back of the hill print and the front 
of the big toe is 18 inches. Nice. 18 long and uh, at least 8 inches wide at the widest part. And the heel was 5. You hear it? It wasn't supposed to rain today until 11 p.m. And uh, it started raining about 20 minutes ago. This is why you don't hike anywhere without a, a raincoat or a poncho. We've hiked in the Uintas of Utah many times where there's a 0% chance of rain and it downpours on us for two, three hours. If you can buy a raincoat that fits over you and your backpack, it's nifty. Yep, <laughs> Jenny's protecting her backpack too. I've got a rain cover in my backpack, but it's not it's not wet enough for me to pull that out. Huh. Some structures up there it looked like almost, huh? Not enough to make a big deal out of on those ones. This is where we heard the grunting and on the way in before the storm descended upon us. Now we have wind and rain. But yeah, down in there, we kept on hearing a grunt. It looked like, um, it was a scream. Two different tones. Higher than lower, ah, but really loud. Right. Well, this is the section on the way in that we kept hearing vocalizations right by this logging cleanup area. That scared me. We should stop right here and see what we can hear. Yeah, this is the grunting area. Look way off over there, people. Let's just be quiet. There's Mount Hood. And we're near Skookum Lake. Just like focus on those trees and see if we can't see a peeker where that was. You heard that scream? Let's see if we can get a peeker watching us leave that made the vocalization. I hear it. Yep. We just heard the grunting. That's what I'm gonna turn the microphone on uh, on high, you guys. There it went again. Even with the microphone turned up high, it's far enough away. I don't think they're gonna hear it. Further away than last time. Like 
kind of further down the hill. This switches back, so we'll go past it once or twice more. Yeah. For about the last 20, 30 minutes, I keep on feeling like I've been watched, and I didn't say anything to these guys until Jenny just... I know, I actually turned around because I thought something was behind me. And there ain't nothing there. And we're at the section where we keep hearing the grunts. And I apologize, the microphone is turned up as loud as it goes, or the highest sensitivity. I got it turned all the way up since it's a section where we're getting that stuff, so may have a chance of getting that stuff for you guys. The grunt keeps going behind it. So weird. Something keeps grunting. Well, it went four miles since I turned this on. I was just saying earlier how we haven't seen any sign of deer or elk or anything like that. And on the way back, we didn't see these on the way up. But now we're on the way back and we're seeing them. And they look pretty fresh. This one right here, you can see where it kicked up the moss. And that would have already dropped down after our first rain. Oh yeah, they are fresh. They weren't in the snow when we come up because we had to cross all of this. So yeah, that's good. That means there's something up here for them to eat and maybe Bigfoot eats the same thing and maybe Bigfoot eats them too. Some of them are rain logged or water logged from rain. I keep hearing the grunting off to our left. Weird, I wonder why it keeps grunting over there. We should be circling back to it, except for we're gonna get below it. We were just above it. Decided to go off trail and look around here. I keep, keep hearing wood knocks over there. Oh, I just look at that black thing that caught my eye. It's probably a burnt tree or something, but I was looking at it. You see it? Yeah, I think so. I'm hearing the grunting again. But I'm just wondering what that was. <laughs> what is it that's up there grunting? Something. It's the same. We went around it. Whatever's been grunting, we went around it.
whatever's been grunt, grunting and making those vocalizations during the hike. We're hoping it gives us one last get out of here, don't come back scream. We've had that on several expeditions. When you get back close to the trailhead of the vehicle and they know that you're leaving for good, they'll sometimes give you one of those. There it goes again. The river is going to drown out what we're hearing. We heard that same type of vocalization when we was in Mount St. Helens, except for it was like also slamming the ground with a lot of percussion. It was like, I don't know, taking like a 50 pound, 100 pound boulder and just dropping it on the ground. The, the percussion you can imagine that making. So similar grunt in the Pacific Northwest along with other vocalizations and measured out a, a footprint up here. All right, we're uh, back to the point where we could, couldn't drive any longer. So we hiked in, did about a six mile hike round trip in the Skookum Lake area. I hope you guys enjoyed. Keep on watching. We're gonna keep on squatching. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Isn't he cute? I can't believe he's running around with snow on the ground still. Poor little guy. You gotta be freezing. Oh, his fingers are so cute. <laughs> Awfully cold for him to be out and about. I mean look, he's right next to a snowbank up here by Skookum Lake.